last two lessons, we defined our field type and our field schema, so we know what type of data to store and where to store it. Now we need to add a field widget to collect input from our users so that we know what data to store. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at implementing hook field widget info and hook field widget form. The combination of the two will allow us to provide a user interface in the form of two HTML text field elements that will allow an end user to input both a hex color and a label value to go along with an any entity that has an instance of the RGB field attached to it. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to provide administrators with a user interface element for entering data for your custom field type or for any existing field type. When we're looking at our site, if we navigate to Structure, Content Types, and we go to the Manage Fields page for the article content type, you can see that we've already got a color field added to our article content type. However, if I click on the Add Content link and then click Article, and I scroll down the form here, we don't see anywhere that we can enter in color information on this form yet. That's because we haven't defined a widget to collect user data. Widgets are a combination of an implementation of hook field widget info and hook field widget form. In an earlier lesson, we already added a really basic definition of hook field widget info. Let's take a look at that quick. If I switch to my code, you can see in the RGB module, I've already got this RGB field widget info function that returns a simple array describing, in this case, just the human readable label of our widget and the field types that this widget will apply to. The key of this array is the unique name of this widget, so we've prefixed it with our module name just to be on the safe side. We had to set this up in order for our field to even show up in the field UI as something that we could add to our article content type. Now we're going to talk about how we can expand on this and actually create the widget for collecting user data. Let's look at the documentation for hook field widget info again. On api.drupal.org, I can pull up the documentation and it says that the return value for this function is an array describing the widget types implemented by the module, which is what we've got already. We've got, in our case, one widget type. Of course, you could define any number of different widget types by returning more than one element in this array. So we've got our RGB text field as a human readable label, and we've added a field types key to tell Drupal which particular field types this widget can be used for. There's some additional keys that we could add here as well. We could add a short description to go with our widget. And then we have this settings key, which is an array whose keys are the names of the settings available for the widget type. This hints that widgets can have per instance settings. A good example of this would be the file field. When you add a new file field to any content type, one of the things that you can set is what type of files should this field be allowed to have uploaded. So you have a text field, which allows you to enter in things like the extension of files that you can upload. These are per field instance settings. The widget can also define optionally how you would like to handle the scenario where you have a multiple value field. So when you've set your field to say, I would like to be able to collect unlimited values instead of just one, do you want Drupal to handle that use case for you? Or do you want to write some custom code to handle the implementation of that multi-value widget. We've already got this basic hook field widget info though, so we'll stick with what we've got for now. The other key to this puzzle is the hook field widget form. Let's look at the documentation for that. So again, on api.drupal.org, I've pulled up the documentation for hook field widget form, which takes a handful of arguments uh, and then returns the form for a single field widget. Really, we just return the form element or a form API array that defines the element that we would like to display to users to collect data. It might be a text field, might be a checkbox, whatever the use case. We need to set up that form API array in our implementation of hook field widget form. When our hook is called, we get some additional information passed in. Form and form state are pretty standard for anything that handles form API forms. Dollar sign $field and dollar sign $instance here refer to the global definition of the field and the per instance definition of this field as it relates to the widget. So we can make adjustments to our widget based on settings in that field instance. Language code items is an array that contains all of the values that were previously set for this field for a particular entity. So if we had saved our node, 
this would contain any data that had been set before, so we can display it to users to edit. Delta refers to this value that is being displayed. So if we have a multi-value field that can hold, say, three possible field values, this function, hook field widget form, gets called once for each value that we want to, or each field that we want to provide, each value we need to display. And this delta is incremented to indicate this is the first time, this is the second time, this is the third time that the function has been called. I'll also point out that hook field widget form is kind of an anomaly in hooks in that it's not one that you can just implement hook field widget form in any module and have it called for a widget for some other module. This hook field widget form, or in our case, RGB field widget form, will only be called for field types that are defined by the RGB module. Let's go ahead and look at implementing hook field widget form in our own code. If I switch back over to my editor, the first step here is just going to be adding a simple implementation of the hook. It might look something like this. So I've declared the function RGB field widget form. I could have put this anywhere in the module, but I like to keep my hooks related to field types, field widgets, and field formatters grouped together. So I put this right under our implementation of hook field widget info. I find that it just makes it a little bit easier to read. In here, I need to make changes to this dollar sign element array, which contains the sort of already stubbed out widget, and add some form API elements that will allow collection of data. So I'm going to have to return that element. Like so. If you think about the data that we're storing for our RGB color field, we need to collect the hex value of the color and a label to go with that color or the color name. So our widget is actually going to consist of two text fields. Let's go ahead and add those text fields to this dollar sign element. So I start by adding a new element with the name RGB. The name here is important. This actually matches the name of the column that I defined in my hook field schema uh, in the previous lesson. This allows the field API to know which column to save this value into and to handle that for me automatically. Now, I can just make this a simple text field. So I have an array, a form API array, type text field. I've added a field prefix here, RGB colon, uh, and then the pound sign, and make it easier for people to understand. I should enter in a hex value here. I've set the size to six because you you know, these colors are only ever six characters long. The other thing that I'll need to do here is deal with what happens when there's already a value for this field. So I need to set the default value. And this is where the dollar sign items variable comes into play. Dollar sign items, I said, contains the values that were previously set for this field, if any. So I'll do an is set items delta RGB. So if there is a value, let's assign the value of this field to that. Otherwise, we'll just leave it blank. So just a reminder, this function, RGB field widget form, will be called once for every possible field value. So if our field is set to have a cardinality of three, so you could have three values in this field, this function will be called three times, and the delta will be incremented each time items contains the values that were previously set for this field. The other thing I'm going to need is a simple label field. So I'll actually just copy and paste the RGB field that we already created. Like so I'll change the name here to label. I'll update the default value code like so. And we'll change this to say color name like so. We could remove the size because this is kind of an unlimited size there. All right, so now we've got a simple label field as well, and we're returning it. I'm going to save my code, and I'm going to switch back over to our site. Back on my site, if I click on the Add Content link and now go to Article, and I scroll down, you could now see the RGB and color name fields that were added by our implementation of hook field widget form are displayed here on the article content type form. So great, we've now provided a way for someone to enter in a value for our field. You'll note though that there's some missing information here. Look at the image field. You can see the label that was added for this image field is displayed as well as the help text. Ours isn't showing. Same for the body field. You can see the label and some additional information. 
So in order to see why this isn't showing right now, let's switch back over to our code. And I'm going to add a DSM element here, like so. DSM provided by the devel module will allow us to just print out the contents of this dollar sign element array, so we can see what's going on. If I switch back to the site and refresh, you can see it printed out at the top there. And if I expand that, you can see that that contained a sort of stubbed out widget with some information about the entity that this particular field instance has been applied to. And then we've gone and added the RGB and label elements as children of this. However, this element itself, the parent, doesn't have a type. So it's not going to be displayed unless we tell it what type of element this is. I'm going to go ahead and set this to a field set. So if I switch back to my code, I'm going to say element type equals field set. This is actually element pound type, like so. Back to my site, refresh the page. And when I scroll down, you can see this has been converted to a field set. We can see the label. If we had defined help text for this field instance, that would show up here as well. Great. So that's working. In the way that the field system works, if this was a multi-value field, our function would get called x number of times, and it would display this field set three times or four times or however many values this field had. That's not necessarily what we want, though. So back in our code, we can make a couple of adjustments to account for this. In our code, we've got this dollar sign field variable, which defines the global field definition. I'm going to print that out right now. So I'm going to say DSM field, switch back to our site, and click refresh. So now this DSM printout contains information about the field as it's been defined within the field UI. And you'll see that one of the properties of this array is cardinality. This refers to the number of values that can be collected for this field. Right now it's set to 1. Negative 1 would indicate that this had an unlimited value, or if it had a different number, there are going to be three or five or 10 widgets displayed for collecting values for this field. In my code, I want to make use of this information to just kind of wrap our existing element type equals field set so that we're only setting it as a field set when the cardinality is one. Switch back to the code. I'll go ahead and delete this DSM. And I say if field cardinality is equal to one, change this to a field set. Otherwise, don't, because the field API will take care of RGB field widget form function once for each field value, displaying those inside of the default container for collecting multiple field values. So we'll go ahead and save that. And now we've got a really basic form for allowing people to enter data. Back on our site, click refresh. We implemented RGB field widget form in order to add two text fields, one for collecting an RGB hex value, something like, you know, 663399, and another for collecting a color name, we could say green. We haven't yet implemented the functionality that will allow this value to be saved. We'll take a look at validating and saving the data in the next lesson.